इंद्रो ओ ब्रह्मणस्पतिर्भिजयते तरा भगवन्महर्षिमणा नम काव्यकंठवासीष्ठश्रीगणपति मुन नम श्रीगुरदत्तात्रेयाय नम श्रीमात्रे नम द लाइफ ऑफ काव्यकंठ वासीष्ठ श्री गणपति मुनि बेस्ड ऑन द बुक रिटर्न बाय श्री गुंटूर लक्ष्मीकांत मुगारो टाइटल्ड नायना पब्लिश्ड इन 1958 द फर्स्ट पब्लिकेशन This video series is an attempt to, to reveal about the life of Kavyakanta Vasistha Sri Ganapati Muni by taking the central idea from the book written in Telugu and translating it in English. Sri Guntur Lakshmi Kantham Garu has done a tremendous research of 12 years to collect the experiences of devotees spread across four states of India especially in South India. in his attempt to do so he expressed his gratitude to kg subramanya shastri and kalyana rama shastri known as appu brothers and also he conveyed his gratitude to sri tv kapali shastri one of the prominent disciples of kavyakanta vasistha sri ganapati muni who has written a brief life history of the great master titled as vasistha vaibhavam He says that this book especially helped him in grasping the language which is very important to convey the matter. Sri Kantham Garu recollects his experiences of attempting to compose the life of Kavyakanta Vasistha Sri Ganapati Muni several times till 1957 April and he says that it is all the grace of Bhagwan Sri Ramad Maharshi which made this possible. time should come and when the time is ripen everything will fulfill bhagwan raman maharshi used to say that purpose will fulfill itself according to his saying this life history of nayana has been completed in the year 1958 like how sri guntur lakshmi kantham garu has been designated to compose the life of nayana sri K Nateshwar who used to work as municipal overseer in Mambalam Chennai who is the principal devotee of Nayana and also to Bhagwan Sri Raman Maharshi has been initiated by Bhagwan Sri Raman Maharshi to search find and copy all the great works of Kavyakanta Vasistha Sri Ganapati Muni which are spread across four states of South India among several disciples of nayana in the april of 1957 sri guntur lakshmi kantham garu had the darshan of bhagwan sri raman maharshi in tiruvannamalai and after the darshan he visited his wife's sister shrimati chalayamma rao garu and her husband sri jjk murthy who used to work in usha company as circle sales manager in chennai During his stay at their residence in Chennai he felt an immediate urge to start writing the life of the great master so he immediately started the work in his work of writing this life history sri chalayama rao garu and jjk murthy garu has provided all the necessary material and provided him quiet place to compose this life history and so he expresses his deep gratitude to these two people who made it possible at their residence in chennai and also he expresses his thanks to his elder brother sri srihari garu who used to work as advocate in elementary of vishakhapatnam district whose suggestions in fact helped him to be in this tapasya of collecting the experiences of nayana and completing this work so he says that the above mentioned three people will become 
equal partners in his merit that he gains by composing this life history of the great master. He expresses his gratitude to Sri Kambampati Ramagopala Krishnamurti Garu, who used to work as Sanskrit Pandit in Hindu High School Vijayawada, for proofreading this work and correcting the mistakes. And he also expresses his gratitude to Sri Kandur Subramanian Garu, proprietor of Uma Publishers, and to Victory Press for printing this book within the timelines. This is written by the author on 21st March 1958. The first publication of this book has an index with nine chapters and those chapters are Udaya Prabha Khandam, Tapa Prabhoda Khandam, Vritti Khandam, Tapa Swarupa Tattvavatara Khandam, Renukanugraha Khandam, Prachara Khandam, Munivaibhava Khandam, Veda Vasishta Khandam, Siddha Purusha Khandam. This great work, Nayana, is dedicated in favor of Srimati Suramagaru, who has done great service to Kavyakanta Vasista Sri Ganapati Muni, and she is the wife of the author. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. First chapter, Udaya Prabha Khandam, Vamsa Charitramu, Ancestral History. There is a small village by the name of Kalvarayi in the Mandal of Vishakapatnam, six miles to Bobbili town in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Once upon a time, a lotus has grown on a rock and this incident has led to the naming of this village as Kaluvaragi. And in Sanskrit, the Pandits used to call this as Kumudopala, where Kumuda means lotus and Upalam means rock. So that's how this village got the name as Kumudopala and in Telugu known as Kaluva Rai. In this village, there is a family by the surname Nababu Ayala Somayajulu. Though they are less in number, their glory is widespread across the region. To the time of this story, three generations have been passed in this family. Before coming to this village, this family is believed to have been staying in the Godavari district in a village called as Vakkalanka. And even before that, they used to live a small village by the name of Nandiala in Dattamandal. The famous Ramabhadra Dikshita Kavi, who has composed a drama titled Janaki Parneyam, is from this family. And even before migrating to Nandiala, this family is believed to have been staying in Tamil Nadu in those days in an area called as Cholamandal near the Kumbakona Pranta in a village called as Valangaiman Agraharam. Because of their origin in Cholamandala area, they are believed to be Vadama Brahmins belonging to Rugveda. And like them, several Brahmin families from Cholamandala have migrated to the eastern coast of Andhra Pradesh in those days. The Brahmins of the Cholamandala belonging to the Dravida Rashtra are thus called as Dravid Brahmins and are considered as one of the special sect of the Brahmin. Though there are several Brahmin families belonging to the Dravida Shakha by the surname Ayala Somayajula, only the Ayala Somayajula family staying in Kalvarai has a special title known as Nababu. It is not known when and where exactly this title Nababu has been given to this family. As per the information given by the family members, it is believed that this family has the title Nababu even before they reached the Godavari Mandal. And so, we can think that this family used to be a big Jamindar family during the Muslim rule and used to be called with this special title. The first person in this family to make Kaluvarayi village as his hometown is Sri Jagannatha Shastri. He came to this region for educational purposes and used to stay in a village known as Nandabalaga, which is very near to this Kaluvarayi village. And after some time, he approached a great master in Srikakulam town. During Sri Jagannatha Sastri's stay in Nandabalaga village near Kaluvarayi, there used to be a 
village head of Kalurai by the name Sri Ganti Sarvapa Sastri. He is a very rich man having 50 acres of very rich fertile land and also a very big house with nine doors. And he is believed to be the richest Brahmin of that entire region. His wife's name is Lakshmamma. This couple has been blessed with a daughter, an only daughter. And so, Sri Ganti Sarvaprasasri used to think that he would give his daughter in marriage to any boy who is very good in character and also in education, even though if he be a poor person. During Sri Jagannath Sastri's stay in Nandabalaga village, he has fallen in the good eyes of Ganti Sarvaprasasri. He has been observing the boy since a long time and has come to a decision that this boy is from a very good family, having very good manners and also very good determination to learn several subjects. And he decided that he would give his daughter in marriage to Sri Jagannath Shastri. But he didn't convey his idea even to his wife till the daughter has come to a right age. After some time, Sri Ganti Sarvaprasasri, along with his family, has gone to Kashi Kshetra for a darshan. And during his stay in Kashi Kshetra, unfortunately, he left his body. But somehow, before leaving the body, he conveyed his wish to his wife. After completing his final rituals in Kashi, the family reached the Kalvarayi village after several months. And upon reaching the village, she immediately sent a message to Sri Jagannath Shastri, who was staying in Srikakulam. She arranged the marriage, and during the marriage, along with the daughter, she has given all the property that they had, the 50 acres fertile land and the house, and along with this property, Sri Jagannath Shastri also got the village head position from his father-in-law. Like that, Kalurai became a prominent permanent place for the Ayala Somayajula family since then. After Sri Jagannath Sastri, his only son, Sri Bhima Sastri, has taken over the village head position from him. Bhima Sastri has three sons and they are Sri Narasimha Sastri, Sri Sarveshwara Sastri and Sri Prakasha Sastri. The elder among these three brothers is Sri Narasimha Sastri, who has taken over the village head position after his father and also played a very important role to keep the family intact and also to live with all his brothers. And he is the father of the hero of this story. Sri Narasimha Sastri, like his ancestors, has very profound knowledge on the subjects like Ayurveda, Jyotishya and Mantra Shastra. And he has also done great tapasya on several mantras. He is the fifth person to continue the Sri Vidya Diksha of the family. Sri Narasimha Sastri's wife's name is Srimati Narsamamba. She comes from a village by name Logisha Graharam, which is just six miles from Kaluvarai. And she belongs to a family having surname Papu. Like her husband, she also has great inclination towards spiritual practices and also has taken few mantras from her husband. Sri Narasimha Sastri has great likeness towards worship of Dunti Ganapati of Varanasi and Srimati Narsamamba has great likeness towards worship of Lord Surya Narayana Murti. During his childhood, Sri Narasimha Sastri has done great travel across India. During his travel, he has witnessed several incidents across India in which he observed the cruelty of the British rulers to suppress the Indians. In his grief-struck heart, he felt that the great motherland India has suffered very violently during the Muslim rule and also during the current British rule. And during these invasions, India has lost its past Vedic seer's glory and the power of the Vedic land. Sri Narasimha Sastri used to believe that Restoring the past glory of the ancient Vedic India is very important for India and Indians to regain the strength and build the nation once again. And in this freedom fight, he realized 
that the strength and power of the Vedic Upasana is very important. So he started praying the Lord to give him a son who could display this great power of the Vedic wisdom and also who could fight for the freedom of the motherland. He conveyed this great wish of having a son who could fight for motherland and she also expressed her willingness and started praying her Ishta Devata, Lord Surya Narayana Murti. The couple started doing great austerities and mantra dikshas and this initiation is nothing but the divine will. This is the ancestral history of the great saint of all time, Kabyakanta Vasishta Sri Ganapatimani, he who is the manifestation of the fruits of Narsamamba and Narsimha Sastri's austerities, he who demonstrated greatest excellence in several subjects with his power of speech, who in his early childhood has chosen fearless tapasya as his lifelong motto, he who shined as a jewel in the scholarly competitions as a Siddha Kavi by gaining the nectar from the gods themselves, he in whom the power of tapasya has taken a form and is very strikingly visible and he who became master to the elders in the Mantra Shastra and in whom the essence of the scriptures is very strikingly visible and he who restored the ancient glory of the Vedic Sanskrit Pandits and he who has done great tapasya and revealed the secrets of several Devata Tattvas and he who has restored the Vaibhava of the ancient great Rishis and revealed the method of the worship of the Vedic seers. That great Mahanubhava, that great Tapasvi, that great student of Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi, the life of a great Tapasvi, the great Ganapati Vivarta Avatara, the Vasista Gotrodbhava, Sri Kavyakanta Vasista Sri Ganapati Muni, who came down to teach us mortals how to achieve immortality amidst samsara, even fulfilling your responsibilities as an householder. Om Tat Sat Brahmanaspatir Vijayate Taram Indro Vishwasya Rajati